Well, sometimes the vitality of SLO2 surprises me so much. I mean, from this to this. <laughs> Hello people, welcome back to another new episode of The Scene and thanks for tuning in again. So I posted a new short film Osmosis this month and this scene, this dark mood shot is very iconic and it represents the color of whole film. This film was shot on only Sony a7 III and Sony 24-200 5mm f4 G lens. So if you're interested in the review of this lens, here's a video for you. So I made a short film and also review. We know we have to do. Of course, color grading video and DaVinci Resolve. So today, I'll show you guys how to do cinematic dark mood color grading in DaVinci. So pass the microphone to the guy who does the color. And as always, let's breathe a new life into the footage. Enjoy. All right, welcome back. So this is original s 2 footage. Well, I'd like to say this situation is pretty normal and easy to do, but no. You gotta make it up some. So this scene represents the mentality inside of whole film. So I wanted to shoot in completely dark space with only one key light. But I don't have like the place. So what I did is turn off all room lights and find the plain background as much as possible. So this is all what I could. But still we can see something we don't need at left and right. But I'll make them disappear later. Okay, so let's work on the base of everything. Well, this time I want this scene to have some strong first impression which can get attention of audience. You know, like a movie poster. So I'm gonna give it some punchy contrast. Okay, so booze contrast, but don't wanna hit zero. So just right amount of contrast around right here. I wanna leave some detail in here and also gain pivot. So the pivot is easiest exposure control. So before I work on those color wheels, I adjust the total exposure with this pivot. So I'm gonna do pivot like this. Good, now the image is very contrasty, punchy, very good. Okay, hold on. When you do contrast and exposure, do you know how much you should gain those? I mean, it totally depends on people, but let's ask him about that. Well, like he said, there is no answer. But usually, I use this RGB parade to check where I am on this color light balance. Casually, this parade shows you how the exposure of red, green, blue is going on. If they touch to zero, the shadow will be crashed, which means a pure black, and touch to thousand, pure white. I usually do like this. Maximum highlight is around 8 or 900, and lowest shadow is probably 50, avoiding 0. But sometimes I touch to 0 on purpose. And the skin tone is around 5 or 700. So this time, the brightest area will be either of a forehead or uh, this white t shirt, which means today's max exposure is around. Uh, between 5 and 700. So now, after we did contrast and pivot, the parade looks good. But still, I want more black in shadow and the highlight looks too much right now. So next, moving to primary wheels for fine adjustment. Okay, first, I'm gonna do offset. Just bring this down a little bit to get more darker mood. Maybe around here. Good. And I'm gonna reduce gain, which is highlight. Now it's kind of too much, so bring this down. Good. But I'm gonna boost this gamma to get creamy mid-tone. Very good. And reduce this lift, I mean getting more shadow. Good enough. And also I'm gonna use this shadow to get more, you know, black in this image. Just bring this down. Now the image is getting stronger black, like this. And I'm gonna reduce low range to avoid hitting zero. Around here. And I'm gonna use this easy highlight and shadow for final adjustment. So don't use those easy highlights and shadows for primary uh, exposure control because it's not gonna work well. I'm just using those for final adjustment. Just a you know, micro uh, highlight shadow adjustment. So I'm gonna get rid of highlights a little bit just negative uh, maybe 30 yeah works well also I'm gonna get details in shadow by boosting this shadow just just a little bit okay very good okay let's turn off on off on we're good now we're ready to add colors okay next we're moving to primary colors so this node will be 
my saturation. So in this section, I only do color correcting. Not gonna deep dive into color grading like a creative looks. Just add saturation and adjust the color balance with those primary wheels. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna gain saturation with this just all the way up. I usually do between 75 and 80 most of the time. Probably 78. Looks good. So when we look at this image in Parade, we can see we have too much of red. It's not gonna match with the color I want this time. So shift this gain toward blue side to make RGB even. See, now we are getting rid of red. Maybe I want more blue. Yeah, I think we're good. Also, I'm gonna shift this gamma to green side a little bit. Good, just like this. And also, I'm gonna use those temperature and tint for a final adjustment for uh, color correcting. So just shift this temperature to blue side, but not too much. Just micro adjustment and tint to green side. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now we have a base color. So next, I'm gonna create a dark mood color by using log wheels. Okay, I'm gonna start off with shadow. I want cold and dark mood. So reducing red and getting green blue power. So I'm gonna shift this to green blue. Just all the way down. It's making the mood. But instead of it, I need a little bit more orange red for skin. So shift this midtone to opposite side of shadow. So all the way up. Just getting some red and magenta for skin. I think it's good. Okay, now I want to maintain cold blue feel on this white t-shirt. So I'm gonna reduce this green and red. Just getting more blues. Just like this. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. Very good. Okay, let's turn off and on. Off, on. Now we're getting close to what we want. Okay, moving to skin tone. Well, this time, even though we messed around with colors, skin tone still keeps the peace. It looks very good. But to help the story of this film, I'm gonna change a little bit. So first thing first, we know what we have to do, which is qualifier and to select only skin color. If you're using Premiere Pro, in this case, you're gonna have to use uh, HSL secondary. Just select my skin by using uh, HSL hue, duration, and luminance. And once you select the skin, blend those together. I'm just gonna blur this out, just like this. Okay, so I'm moving to hue versus options. First, I'm gonna play around with saturation right here. So I want coldness in the skin, so reduce saturation on yellow and red. Just make a point like this, and I'm gonna reduce those but just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna turn off this. Good. And moving to luminance, I'm going to lower red like this and boost yellow to make a color step on the skin. Good. And hue. Again, make points like this. I think I need a little bit magenta, so I'm gonna boost this up just tiny a little bit. Okay, just like this. Okay, so let's zoom in and I'm gonna turn off and on. Okay, turn off, on, off, on, off, on. Well, it's a very small difference, but now the image has more cooler feel. <laughs> So next, what I'm gonna do is making a bunch of windows to give it some cinematic and dramatic mood. Okay, first, I'm gonna create vignette. So I'm gonna use this window and this circle mask like this. And I'm gonna make it like this. Because the light is coming from this way, I wanna make him so alone, like in a prison with a thin and weak moonlight. Good, so feather this out like this. And I'm gonna invert it and move into curve and lower the exposure. Just like this. Good. So next, I'm gonna make some magic windows to make those things I don't need disappear into the darkness. It's so easy. So I'm gonna use pen tool to make a box like this. 
just select this and cover where I don't need and feather this out both of inside and outside and going to exposure and I'm gonna lower this all the way down just like this until we don't see okay it's gone it's completely gone we can't see anything right here and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing on the left side all right so let's turn off this vignette and magic windows okay let's off on off on okay, it's much better than before without those okay and also I'm gonna make some extra window lights okay again window tool and this circle mask and I make a thing mask just like this very thin Okay, I'm gonna put this on this left side of the head and moving to curve and I'm gonna gain some extra exposure just like this okay and I'm gonna lower the mid tone detail to make it more creamier pretty good and I'm gonna make exactly the same thing one more time on the right shoulder okay, very good okay let's turn off those two off on off on now it's like a this guy is chained in a very dark uh isolated room this scene is expressing the isolation very good okay at the last i'm gonna make another mask but this is for the skin so again circle mask but this is for skin so i'm gonna cover the whole face by this mask like this and of course feather this out just like this and moving to curve and get extra light on this face just a little bit boosting exposure and of course I'm gonna lower mid to detail like this okay let's turn off on off on now the face pops out nicely and done all done Okay, now let me take you to the journey of all processes we did this time. Enjoy. Okay, now I'm happy with this result and my job is done like this. I'll give this back to you. Okay, welcome back. I hope it helped you in some ways. So that scene was shot on f4 lens, but with a proper lighting and color grading, the image came back alive from just a flat SLO2 footage. Before, it was just a dark room, but after, it has certain feel which is helping the story a lot. Of course, it's better if you could those window lights on a set, but most of us, including me, can't afford that fancy set. So what we do is use everything we have and do everything we can and do extra stuff such as those window lights in a post-production. Now we know this window tool is very powerful and we can use them for making a feel in a scene. There is the same thing in Premiere Pro too, so you watch this video until now. So what you're gonna do is finish this video and try what you learned today. Okay, this is it. If you have any questions about this video, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. And if you have any requests for next scenes, also leave the comment below. So today's topic is very much it and thank you for watching this video. If you like this scene, show me a thumb and that hit the subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs>